Let's look at um, implications of free trade. So if we go on to page three, the effects on individuals and firms is quite similar. So I'm going to go through individuals, but then firms are going to skip over quite quickly. So there's three different impacts I want you to have a look at in terms of um, individuals. And what I want you to think about as we go through um, is to break it down in, in terms of this. So we have uh, the trade exposed at the bottom. So trade exposed. And we're going to go with non-trade exposed or non-tradable. I'm just going to put non-trade exposed. Should we copy this? Uh, yeah, I'd write this down. You might have some space uh, at the bottom of the sheet or write it down in your book. Um, non-trade exposed is going to be all households or all consumers. I'm going to put this as all households. Uh, we also have, as far as trade exposed, you've got your import competing and our export orientated. Export orientated. And I'll explain those in a second as we go through. Um, but I think this is a good way to understand the different impacts and how it affects different aspects of the economy. So effect on individuals. All households benefit from free trade as consumers, enjoying access to a greater variety of goods at lower prices. And this is talking to this one up the top. They're households which don't work or aren't employed or aren't exposed directly to the tradable sector, but they are consumers. And so as a consumer, you go to the shops and you buy a flat screen TV and the tariffs on those have come down so they're cheaper. You go and you buy a car and the tariffs on those are now cheaper. You go and you buy um, some, uh, some rice or some flour and the tariffs on those have come down and so they're cheaper. So as a consumer, you benefit. So all consumers benefit in terms of um, free trade as consumers. Now the thing is, not all households are just consumers. Most of them are usually uh, workers who are employed and depending on where they're employed, the impact of free trade is going to affect them differently. So the next point, those households with members employed in export industries also benefit from open access to overseas economies. So farmers in Australia, for example, have benefited quite a lot from free trade because it tends to be overseas markets that are opened up to Australian agricultural exports. So these export orientated um, industries benefit and those benefits flow on to the households employed by those businesses. So all households, you know, they benefit, we can give them a tick, export orientated industries, they benefit and those benefits flow on to, uh, to farmers, to workers in businesses that export um, goods to other countries. Where is the downside? That last point. Those households with members employed in import competing industries are worse off. Uh, the drawbacks of free trade tend to hit these households disproportionately and the impacts on employment are often concentrated both in terms of occupation and geography. It often leads to structural unemployment. So what we're talking about there is the two different aspects of employment. You've got your occupational, um, you've also got your geographic impact. So it affects certain occupations, but it also tends to be heavily geographically concentrated and it also tends to lead to structural unemployment because it affects those particular occupations. Um, that means that the drawbacks, you know, those in the import competing industry, so the car industry, for example, or other manufacturing industries, they not only see the downside of free trade, it is heavily concentrated amongst them. They feel a big impact. They lose their jobs. We get a 5% discount on our cars. They lose their entire income. And for a lot of them, because it's structural unemployment, they're unable to get another job, or they must get another job that's fewer hours or lower pay. And so it really does affect them quite heavily. Everyone else benefits, but to a much lesser extent per person. So the whole economy in their uh, position as consumers and also exporters benefit. It's import competing um, industry employees that are hardest hit in terms of households. If we move on to firms, um, it's effectively the same thing. So all firms benefit from free trade as buyers of goods. Um, those firms in export industries benefit, and those firms in import competing industries are worse off. So again, all firms better off, export orientated firms better off. Firms that are in the import competing business, so the local car manufacturing industry and manufacturing in general, they tend to be um, worse off. Let's go on to the last point, so governments. The effect on governments is slightly different. So if you look at the effects of governments, you have a reduction in tariffs can reduce government revenue. 
while reductions in export subsidies reduce government spending. So depending on which one of those two it is, you're going to see either a benefit to government or a cost to government. So obviously governments don't want to forego tax revenue, so if they have to reduce tariffs, they have to make up those revenues somewhere else or cut spending or run a government budget deficit. Um, on the other hand, if they're cutting export subsidies, the government is now better off. So they can cut taxes elsewhere, um, or they can increase government spending, or they can run a budget surplus. Uh, next point, the reduction in trade protection can lead to short-term increases in government spending due to higher levels of unemployment, to so higher welfare payments, also higher payments in terms of um, retraining and requiring government um, to pay for education or to relocate people to um, other places um, where there is employment. Uh, and as you've seen, there are actual government incentives to have people relocate to regions which have a, a growing mining industry, for example, um, because people are unwilling to move from geographic areas with high levels of unemployment, often as a result of free trade. And now last point, economic uncertainty and unemployment also have political consequences as they are unpopular. Let's go back here. It is highly concentrated drawbacks. Those people vote. And they generally vote against these changes. Uh, many political parties campaign against free trade on this basis, both in Australia and abroad. It's all important to remember that this happens in other countries as well in Australia. And there are a number of political parties, polit particularly regionally based ones, that will campaign heavily against free trade. Um, a lot of rural independence, independence as well. Uh, so people like Bob Catter, for example, or Clive Palmer, they often make a big deal about um, you know, economic populism, as it's often called. Uh, fighting for jobs for Australians by fighting against free trade and economic neoliberalism uh, and those sorts of things. And it does tend to be quite popular lines to take. Um, whereas free trade, because it's very small benefits felt by a large number of people, it tends not to be as much of a vote winner.